part two of our series on stewardship. Before we begin and get into this lesson, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for this day. Thank you for another day to serve you. Thank you for your word and your promises. Thank you for your mercy, your loving kindness. I ask today that you would help me to teach this uh, principle of stewardship with clarity and simplicity. And Lord, everybody that's an Watching this, God, I pray that you would bless them, open their eyes and their understanding to behold wonderful things in the Word of God and help us to be good stewards. We want to please you and we want to be blessed. We want to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. So before we get into this part two of stewardship, let's do a really quick review of what we talked about last time. So the lessons learned in the first part is that God only gives us what he knows we are able to handle. If you recall the passage of scripture that we read, which was in Matthew chapter 25, we read about the parable of the talents, which is really a perfect lesson on stewardship. And the master gave to his servants each according to their own ability. And Jesus said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. And so we learn that God only gives us what he knows we are capable of handling. And while we are very happy that that is the truth when it comes to trials and tests and temptations, this is also true when it comes to the blessings and favor of God. God will only bless us with what we are capable of handling. The next lesson learned from last week is that good stewards live with a sustained sense of urgency. If, we, if you recall in the passage of scripture that we read last week, when those servants received the riches that were entrusted to them, the good stewards, the two good stewards, immediately went out and got to work. And that is a key in being a good steward is having urgency living with a sustained sense of urgency. I don't mean a sustained sense of anxiety. No, I mean a sustained sense of urgency. The next lesson we learned is when you're a good steward with the little that you have, God can and will trust you with much. We saw how the master uh, blessed his servants that were good stewards and went out and put the money to work. We also learned that fear and anxiety will warp your judgment. If you recall, the foolish servant who was too afraid decided because of his fear to hide his master's money in the earth. And so the lesson learned is that fear will warp our judgment. And by that, I mean, when we are living in fear and we're afraid of things, we will make bad decisions. We will make choices that we will regret later on in life. And so if you find yourself living in a state of fear, a state of being afraid, rebuke that fear in Jesus' name and talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. I know that sounds wild, but that's actually biblical. In the Psalms, David multiple times had to encourage himself. No one else was there to encourage him, but King David encouraged himself himself in the Lord. And so if you feel afraid and you feel fear come upon you, encourage yourself, talk to yourself, put that, that, that fear on trial and tell yourself why there's no reason to be afraid and encourage yourself with the word of God. The next lesson that we learned is that, again, um, this is anxiety is a lie, but this is going back to fear. Our world today calls fear anxiety, to be anxious, to be, you know, so uptight and anxious. Well, when you really look at anxiety at its root, I believe it's fear. And so again, we already talked about what to do with fear. The next lesson, um, and, and you know what, let me back up. And I wrote down here on this, on this lesson that we learned, and that is that anxiety is a lie. It truly is a lie. If, if you are fearful, if you begin to just think about how blessed you are and what God has done for you and the fact that you have breath in your body, you have a roof over your head, you have food to eat, there's nothing to be afraid of. Fear and anxiety is truly not reality. It's a lie. But when you believe the lie, then your actions that follow 
due to your fear are real. So fear is a lie. It's, it's fake. There's no reason to be fearful and afraid. But the actions that follow fear are real and they lead to bad consequences. So get rid of fear. Get rid of anxiety. Cast it out in Jesus' name. The next lesson we learn is that God sees fear as foolishness. Okay? God sees fear as foolishness. Um, when Jesus told the story of the foolish servant, the master looked on that foolish servant and said, you, you foolish servant, you knew that I am a hard master and I, and I gather harvest where I have not even sown seed. You should have put my money in the bank to where at least I could have received interest. Okay, and the, then the master ends by saying, you foolish and lazy servant. So God sees the, the, the actions that are caused because of fear. God sees it as foolishness. So let's get rid of fear. We don't need to live in fear. The next lesson we learned is that God expects us to be good stewards. Amen. Good stewards who are blessed will be blessed with more. Those wise servants that immediately went out with urgency and they took care and they responsibly managed what their master gave them. Their master was so pleased that the master gave them more than what they had. God takes away from the bad steward. That's another lesson. Whew, that's hard, but that's real. Now, Jesus Christ said this in Luke chapter 12. Jesus said, who then will be the faithful and wise manager? God is looking for good stewards. And I want to be a good steward, God. I want to be a good steward of my time. I want to be a good steward of my faith. Jesus, I want to be a good steward of my family. I want to be a good steward of my finances. Amen. What about you? So here's part two on stewardship. And that is that stewardship starts with little. Stewardship starts with little. Now, Jesus Christ said something that has really... Uh, I've seen the scripture in a new way that I've never noticed it before. This is very powerful. Jesus said, if you're faithful over the little, you'll be faithful over much. If you're dishonest over little, you'll be dishonest over much. Let's dissect this scripture just for a second. So we see Jesus saying, if you're faithful over little, you'll be faithful over much. If you're dishonest, you're going to be dishonest. If you're faithful when you're this, when you're dealing with little things, you're going to be faithful when you're dealing with big things. When you're dishonest with little things, you're going to be dishonest over a lot of things. Okay? So the point that Jesus is making, here's the point, is that increase does not change your heart or your lifestyle. If you were a liar with little things, you're going to be a liar with great things. If you're faithful, if, if, you, if it's in your heart and you are just it, in your heart and your lifestyle, you're just faithful and you're a hard worker and you're honest over even little minor things, then you're just going to be faithful and a hard worker and be honest over great things. And so the point Jesus is making, here's the point, ready? Increase does not change our heart or our lifestyle. Increase doesn't, okay? Um, if somebody's heart and lifestyle is keeping them from giving with the little that they have, then their heart and lifestyle will keep them from giving when they have much. I have heard in my lifetime, I have heard great people, good people, people that have such big hearts, really nice people. And I've heard people in church that are financially, they're not up here financially, they're down here. And because they're down here, they say, I'm not going to give yet. I can't give. I can't afford to give right now. Right now I'm way down here. I don't have a lot of money. I just can't give. But once I make a lot of money, once God blesses me with a great job, then I'm going to give. Or I've heard people say, even with ministry, you know, right now, uh, you, I, all I'm doing, I'm just a Sunday school teacher. All I do is talk to some, you know, little kids and, you know, there's little kids. 
who cares? So I'm not really putting in a lot of effort and a lot of time and fasting and prayer and study just because I'm just a little Sunday school teacher. But someday when I have a big ministry, then I'm going to be really faithful. Then I'm really going to put all my effort into it. Then I'm really going to put all my time into it. And so I want to help you right now to know that that mentality, that heart and lifestyle is a lie. Jesus said increase is not going to change your heart or lifestyle. You want to know what changes your heart or lifestyle? Making the choice. Just making a choice right now and realizing that increase will not change your heart and lifestyle. What changes our heart and lifestyle is ourselves and just realizing and letting the Word of God shape us and mold us and letting what I'm saying to you right now shape and mold your heart to where you say, you know what, David's right. I, I, I am going to make the change right now. Now, right now, while I just have a little bit of money, here I am, just a young person. I, I, you know, I barely make money here and there on side jobs and odds and ends in the summer. And I want to tell you right now, being a good steward of your finances, even though your finances represent small, even though your finances represent little, stewardship starts with little. Say it with me. Stewardship starts with little. Okay? If your heart and lifestyle is enabling you to give now, then your heart and lifestyle will enable you to give, to be a, uh, to be a giver with much, okay? Um, I, you know, think about when it comes to cars, when it comes to houses, you know, people, if you, if you live in a tiny apartment, tr- take care of that apartment like it is a mansion. You should have the most immaculate, beautiful, well-kept apartment in San Diego. Be a stu- Stewardship starts with little. And when God sees that you are responsibly managing and taking care of the little he has given you, that's what makes God pour out blessings and abundance on his people is stewardship. Okay? Don't wait until you have a big, a big job to be a giver. You be an a, a, a irrational giver now. If you are an irrational giver now with the small finances, oh, you're going to all of a sudden get opera. People are going to call you. Opportunities are going to come out of nowhere. You're going to be like, what in the world? Man, God's just opening doors for me to walk through opportunity to be financially blessed. But you know what? That doesn't happen by accident. Blessings from God. God's blessings are not fickle. God doesn't play any, meeny, miny, mo and choose who he's going to bless. No, if you're a good steward, you're going to be blessed. Whether you're white, black, brown, polka dot, it doesn't matter what color you are. Whether you're a man or a woman, if you're a steward, if you're if you're a good steward, you are going to be blessed. If you're a good steward and an and a irrational giver with little, with God's money, it's God's money in the first place. If you can be a steward and be a faithful giver with the little, God can entrust you with much and he will and opportunities will open up. God will open up doors of opportunity. And all I know is I want you to be blessed. I want every single young person that I teach that's under this ministry that I'm doing, I want you to be blessed. I want to see the windows of heaven open up on you, financial blessings, spiritual blessings, ministry, opening, God opening doors for things that boggle our mind and blow our imagination, blow our mind and uh, beyond our wildest dreams, okay? Being a good steward over little makes me think of farming, okay? Jesus talked a lot about farming. You know, farmers have to plant seeds. They have to plow a field, and then they have to go in that field that's plowed, and they have to cast down and plant a lot of seed. And the Bible calls that planting, the Bible calls it sowing. Sowing seed. you got to sow a lot of seed. The more seed you sow, the bigger the harvest, the plants that grow, the the greater the crop will grow. If you plant just a few seeds, you're going to get just a, a small harvest. If you plant a ton of seeds, you're going to get an incredible, great harvest, okay? And what I'm seeing in my life, what I've seen in my lifetime 
And the, is there is people that want a great harvest, but they only want to cast small seed. But it doesn't work that way. If you want the big blessings, you have to cast out big seed. Okay? It's in our human carnal nature to want a large harvest, but not put in the hard work of planting lots of seed. It's in our human nature to want much without being a good steward over little. Now, don't be hard on yourself if that's where you're at right now. If that's where you're at, where your mentality is, God, I want a large harvest, but I, I don't want to put in the, the hard work of being a good steward. God, just please bless me with a great job. I know I haven't been a good steward over my finances, and I know I haven't been a good steward over this and that, but God, just bless me anyways. All right? If that's been your mentality and you realize you're, that's been your actions, don't be hard on yourself. Just ask God to forgive you right now. Right now in this video, ask God to forgive you. Tell God you're sorry for having that kind of heart, that kind of mentality and perspective, and then change. From this point forward, every decision you make, decide to be a good steward over little. Be a good steward over little. And I want to end by saying this. It's God's money. He's entrusted it to us. It's God's money. He's entrusted it to us. God bless you. I'm praying for you. Now let's be good stewards over little.